Welcome to the CoLab Podcast. My name is Michelle. And my name is Devin. On this podcast, we explore concepts of self-mastery and community collaboration through in-depth panel discussions and intimate interviews with dance's most prominent figures. Yeah, yeah. See my peanut butter jelly snack. Pull it right while she uh, painting. That's my sunshine when it's raining. That's my bull. Yeah, yeah. When I'm all alone, she pull through. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Collab Podcast. I'm back with my co-host, Michelle. And our guests today are highly accomplished dancers, choreographers, and directors. Brothers Jacoby and Joshua Bloom have built notable careers separately, but together this dynamic duo brings an overdose of high energy, laughter, authenticity, and creativity. Jacoby Bloom, a professional traveling choreographer and coach, has danced with The Pact, A1 Collective, and SGBM. Jacoby has also choreographed for multiple hip-hop teams, videos, and commercials, and has had the honor of watching some of his students perform and compete on NBC's hit dance competition series, World of Dance. An instructor at the Dance Academy Del Mar, Jacoby shares his craft and is currently building a hip-hop program. Adding to his extensive list of accolades, Jacoby is also the founder and executive director of competitive junior hip-hop teams, Project Minor and Project Unofficial. Established in 2017, Project Minor is heading into its fourth generation of dancers. Alongside Jacoby, Project Minor is co-directed by Joshua Bloom. Joshua has also danced with and co-directed the dance training group, The Pact, and has taught at studios throughout Southern California, including Murrieta Dance Project, Dunamix Dance Project, Snow Globe Perspective, and Evoke Dance Academy. Taking his success to new heights, Joshua has shared his choreography with several K-pop groups, worked with Awesomeness TV, and has also contributed to a new streaming show entitled Floored. Joshua is currently on faculty at Studio Kin in Marietta, where he sh- she shares his craft, working to inspire others, other dancers in the community. In addition to being such significant contributors to the community, both brothers continue to teach, inspire, and showcase their craft. Please welcome our guests today, Jacoby and Joshua Bloom. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, yes, you did. I'm going to apologize. That was good. I was like, okay, goodness. (laughs) Thank you so much for being here today. Um, I'm curious, so how, how does it usually get pronounced? Blum, blum a lot. Blum. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my first name is already difficult enough. People will say Jacoby, and then they say Blum, and I'm like, wow, double whammy. We lost. Forget yeah. it. Done. <laughs> so Bloom. When people say Bloom, it's a yeah. Good day. It's a it's a gold star. It's a gold them. star, hands down. It's a gold star for them. That's so funny because I, I was thinking about today, and I was like, I actually don't. I don't know how I'm supposed to pronounce. Bloom, like, is it Bloom, <laughs> and is it Jacoby? I was like, what if it's not? Oh shoot! <laughs> so usually when I go to Starbucks, I look at the person making my drink and I tell them that my name is their name, so that way we can avoid that whole entire conversation. Oh, okay. because I just don't, I do not want to deal with that. They'll spell Jacoby with a Y, like Jacoby Myers, or they'll spell it with a, just an I. Or they they won't even spell it anywhere near correctly. And I'm like, all right, that's not my yeah. name, but whatever, I'll take it. That's brilliant. That is so brilliant. I might have to do that too because it's. I guess it's just not as a common of a name. Like I guess more so recently, but Devin gets spelled like D E V A N D E V I N E. Like I get so many different variations. So. Sometimes you get double N. Yeah. Sometimes you get double N. Double N. That's interesting. Yeah. Two ends at the end, yeah. Some t- and then sometimes wow. I've seen it with a Y instead of an I. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen that too. Yeah. Been that. yeah. Divine. Divine. Yes. <laughs> um, well, just really quickly, I just want to say, Jacoby, uh, and, and I, I know this because we got some info for, for the podcast from you, but you must know that I'm like type A personality because I thrive on the gold star system. So thank you for giving me a gold star. 
Oh, no, not a problem. We we get so used to teaching teaching the kids, and so we're like, the roles and stuff. like, so we're like, oh, go start. We do star systems at both of our studios, so we're like, oh, you get a star today, and the kids yeah. are like, I hit the lottery. Yeah, you know? like, so all we know now is gold stars. <laughs> so no worries. <laughs> I love it. You speak my language. All right. Well, let's jump right in because I want to take it all the way back to um, how dance started for you in your house, in your life. You know, everyone has a different journey. And so uh, particularly because you two are brothers, I'd love to hear about how dance came into your lives. Um. So interesting. I mean, so I mean, it used to be one of those things that would touch base in our life and we would never like think any mu- anything about it. Um, Josh used to have an interest in dancing before he got into basketball. I used to have an interest in basketball before I got into dancing. So we always used to swap different interests and stuff. However, we never took it on as like a hobby or like a profession. It was more so one of those things that we just did just because it was yeah. fun. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, when I moved to Temecula, I lived in Moreno Valley. <clears throat> and I, and since then I had nothing dance related whatsoever. Moving to Mecula, I had no friends, nobody to even like really talk to. And I signed up to be a theater student because I love acting. I love stage performance, whatever. And they put me in dance because it was the only available course that they had. And uh, don't, I, 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 I remember when that happened and I laughed. I was, I was so, like, like, it was so weird. And Obviously, the stigma's changed over like the course of the decade. Like the boy, when if a boy is dancing, you've already created so many different ideas yeah. and stereotypes. And me being six foot three, going into a dance class, everyone's thinking, "Oh, this football player got forced into a dance class." I've yeah. only seen this in movies. Like that's not that's not how we kind of pictured it. So, you know, and I hated it. There's a tweet that I made, and I said, "I hate this dance class." I swear, and I kept it. Just because I wanted to look back at this tweet, I knew to, I, I knew to keep it. It was a blessing of some sort. I said, I'm going to look back at this one day and laugh. Yeah. So I'll never forget going out <laughs> as irritated as I was. I got my schedule change form. I walked up to my dance teacher and I don't know what happened. I lost it. I lost my paper. I lost it. I had it signed from all my teachers, lost my paper. And I'm so glad that I did because then none of this would be happening whatsoever. I truly believe in God's direction to put us in places at the right time. And that was one of those things that I'll look back and be just completely amazed because in that same year, I went from the beginner course to the intermediate course a half semester. And then I made the varsity team at the end of the year. I had no dance experience whatsoever. I probably got my mom's rhythm. That's probably the only good thing about it. But after that, after that course of the year, I had so much fun and I, I owe it to that whole entire program because they made it more inclusive. Now, this is where it leads into Josh mm-hmm. because I'll never forget, <laughs> I'll never forget there was a day where I'm like, hey, you, you, should, you should dance too. And Josh was like, no. Yeah, I, like, I, I remember I was at basketball practice and I remember he asked me and he had just made the team I think yeah he had I, think it was a good, I think it was the intermediate yeah, team that he had made, just yeah. made intermediate and I, I was at basketball practice I remember the place and everything and then he told me I made the intermediate team you should dance too and I was like no <laughs> like no what what are you talking about and then I remember telling all of my teammates I'm like yo like my brother just told me like I should dance and like he said I like I had an interest for dance before when I was like 10, like I used to run around the house saying I was happy feet, like moments of happy feet. <laughs> like it, it was ridiculous. So I told them, I was like, my brother is telling me to like, like try out for the dancing. And he would be at practice. Like he was sitting at the table mm-hmm. and I was like, I, like he's telling me to practice. And everyone was like, no, don't do it. Nah, dude. Cause I was like six foot in eighth grade. So like, no, you got a feature, bro. Like, no, nah, don't, don't, don't listen to him. And I was like, Man, like I, I don't know. Like I, I don't know if I should or not. And then um what happened? Like you pretty much you kept asking me. I okay, I 
probably forced him to show up to the auditions. But I it think. wasn't even a force, though. It was more like, I know you want to do this, but yeah. you're so worried about your teammates saying something, yeah. so please just show up and just yeah. show out. And he did a great job. I, I remember showing up, and that's that's when I knew that I think I could be pretty decent at it because, like, when I learned the dance, I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun, you know? And I was like, this is cool. And then, like, for basketball, I didn't. I knew I didn't like it because I didn't want to go to practice. Mm-hmm. That's when I knew I didn't like it. And then once um, I made, I made the intermediate team. I didn't even do beginning. I made the intermediate team. Mm-hmm. And then once I made that, um, I had to go to dance camp. Oh my yes! I had to go to dance camp. So so no, you guys don't understand. The dance camp story is like one of the tales that we do not say. I'm going to tell them. You, you can tell them. Tell them. Fine, so I'll never forget. I was, I had just done varsity. I just made varsity. Josh just made the intermediate team. And that's so impressive for him to be a, a freshman. Okay. And he made the intermediate team. It, it's, it doesn't really happen. So when they said, both teams have to go to the respective dance camps. We have a couple of local studios here. We have Artistic Dance Academy. Um, and I think that was the only one we went to. Yeah, that, that was at the time. Yeah. That was the only that's one. So we went to Artistic Dance Academy. And I'll never... <laughs> Josh got so upset because he had to go to the dance camp. He was yeah. mad. I mean, it was to the point where it was tears. I don't know why. Like, I, I don't know it, why. I just didn't want to go. I was like, this is this is dumb. Like, I, I was yeah. Not, I, I didn't understand it and so I tried to convince them my mom tried to convince them like we were just trying to like figure out what was going on yeah so what happened was we got Josh to go I paid to go to both dance camps yeah just so that way he would feel more comfortable because I was the youngest one so like everyone else was like seniors and stuff right. so I think I, I think I was more just scared about like that yes than like anything else but then like I think you coming helped a lot yes yes um it was fun and I just I just remember after going that first time uh-huh. It was rad. Yeah, it was, it was, I, I loved it every every single every time. time. I, and that's when I knew I was like, yeah, I, w- I want to dance. But that was like for fun at that time. Yeah. It wasn't until like the end of senior year when I wanted to actually take it like professionally mm-hmm. and stuff. But at that time, no, oh man, I that was that was so much. That fun. was a that roller was, coaster. Was Lord yeah. have mercy. And then yeah, I, I think that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I love that story so much. Um, one, because I was like you, Jacoby. I, I started dancing before my brother did, and I was the one kind of like egging him on. And he was like, no, like, stop asking me. And then, <laughs> you know, now he has me to thank for all of his dance career. So, Jordan, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I also love that you like, you you did that for your brother that was amazing that's amazing like you really came through and I think that really shows like or speaks and gives our our listeners and gives us a glimpse to your guys's bond um how has dance like brought you closer together um as brothers man what do you even what do you even start well realistically we've, we've been best friends since retreat came out of the world like i i i think like that's that's definitely a thing yeah well, we've we've bonded over so much we video games alone keep us close yeah. i'm not gonna lie to you but uh-huh. dance gave us more of it was like a teammate aspect i guess you know yeah. it's like in on a dance team you dance for each other that's how that's how i feel with my brother you know that's how we feel about each other hopefully right yeah <laughs> and I, I will say like when it first happened and this fool had to be my captain Ooh, y'all when he would give me critiques and stuff i was like shut up no like no this, nah, no like Man. stop then then i got to a point where i was like okay yeah this is this fine i but was like, like i'm just trying first, to help that's all i'm trying to do uh-uh, but, yeah i was not i wasn't because i was like dude you're just picking on me because i'm your brother stop like just stop I'm like that's the like, point you were my brother so i gotta help you i yeah. need to uh, it's kind of like a uh what is it called just like a aggressive love yeah aggressive love mm-hmm. i guess and I would go to mom too. And I'd be mean, like, mom, he's like literally just picking me out. Like it's not funny. Like this, he's just picking me I every used to time. Get, I used to, oh, I would get the talk. I wouldn't get in trouble because I knew mom was secretly on my side. I yeah. knew it because she's like, you're on the right track. She's like, just try to 
chill back, let him do his own thing. And I, of course, I'm not the person to be like, walk the plank, have a good time. I don't know what happens yeah, yeah, to yeah. you, but walk the plank. Mm-hmm. Uh, or I could just be there to tell them, don't walk the plank. Yeah. Walk around, you know? Like it's, there's a lot of different things to it. We've, we've grown. Oh, without, yeah. Without being on the same, we were on the same team. Uh, my senior year, 2015, we were on the same varsity team. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. at at shop right now was fun. That was hilarious. That, that, was that was probably one of my one of the best years of dance. I I don't think anything can top it. And he, he was the one that gave me my first choreography opportunity to to like place on like a like on a stage. Yeah. So yeah. um, I I can't say oh. like he was like probably the, or obviously he's the first person that gave me like opportunity because the year before, um. He was the one that told me to choreograph all the time. So, like, mm-hmm. I got into choreographing and all that stuff. Um, but with there being seniors on the team the year prior, um, they chose their choreography over mine. Mm-hmm. And I think, realistically, everyone knew that, like, mine was better. But since they were seniors, yes, like, they it, wanted it to was be a, able to It was a seniority thing. thing. Yeah. And the, I'm not even trying to give myself clout, but I'm just saying, like, in a sense, like, I, it made sense for them because, like, they had to, like, if they're leaving high school, they want to be able to show their stuff before yeah. they leave. So, um, with him, he's just like, oh, well, since I know you know how to choreograph, like, we'll just place, like, you can choreograph this little section and mm-hmm. stuff. And then gradually, like, we started, like, collabing and all that stuff. And the collabs, oh, my God. Now, no, those are just, those are something else. Now, but, he's, yeah. now he's just better than me. Okay. I don't know what to do. Okay. I'm like, what have I done? No. I created a monster. No. <laughs> nah, but he gave me a lot of opportunity, though. And it's also cool because, like, ever since he moved out to, like, um, cause when he was, when we lived together, we were always just buddy, buddy. Yeah. Like we, I would always be in his room and then we would just be chilling and stuff. Like he has his own room, just bugging me. Like yeah. he would just walk in and just lay out. Yeah, like, so we would have, we would, it would be random, but it would be like three o'clock in the morning and we'll just be in the bathroom just talking. Yeah. Like it, it would just so, be standing there just talking about it. It was stuff. so random. Yeah. Just like. Oh God, I miss those. Yeah, like, those, those, wow. were, those were crazy. I yeah. miss it. it was just weird. You you have a life inside of your profession, your hobbies, and then you have a life outside of your profession hobbies. Yeah. But one thing remained the same was just that connection that we just had because we can be brutally honest with each other. Yeah. And we know at the end of the day, it's like we're we're still gonna be on the same page despite like whatever we may feel about something. Yeah. And and it keeps us connected from us not living. That's true. Because I I realistically, I don't get to see him a lot that much, only through like video games and stuff. But like in person, like (laughs) I get to see him through like rehearsals and everything too. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that is also like our Mm -hmm. job. But at the same time, we still get to goof around and be ourselves and everything. So, yeah. I love that. I want to go back to what you were saying about, um, you know, kind of picking on Josh Jacoby, because I think it's a little <laughs> bit of, I, I think it's, I can relate to that. Cause I think it's a little bit of like older sibling, um, syndrome. I don't know if that's really the, like the right terminology, but I think as older siblings, you know, we want to hone in on like our siblings best, features and and best thing best attributes and so in order to do that you feel like you really need to kind of like push them um a little bit harder than everyone else so i can totally respect and appreciate that and i love that and like you guys i mean my siblings are fire they're 10 times better than me because i feel like i've pushed them so really mm-hmm. devin dylan and jordan you owe your dance careers to me. <laughs> No comment. (laughs) Get that recognition. There you go. That's all that matters. Yeah, we. It's that again. That tough love. That tough aggressive love. But it was. It was for the better interest that I was. I'll always look out for him, regardless if it's the answer. Yeah. But since it was such a profession that I, I went through the same exact thing that he was going through too. I wanted to let him know red flags, warning signs, things to do and strategies in order to survive a high school dance team. And now I totally understand. Like, I look back at it and I'm just like, yo, that makes total sense. And there are things that, and there's things like afterwards that I understood about myself where he came from in a perspective too, because I... I'm the oldest, so I don't get that little brother, big brother kind of feel from his perspective. 
Sorry, I love motorcycles driving by my house. So he trying to like trying to understand like his perspective and everything too it built me a lot better too to have a different understanding of how i am as a bigger brother and also as like a leader in a sense too trying to just get everybody's mm -hmm. viewpoint on everything too so yeah it helped okay so i have to take this opportunity to momentarily live vicariously through you because i never went to a dance camp what was that like? And what was your favorite memory from going to dance camp? I'll tell, you want to say yours first? Um, my, well, the experience for me, I remember just being a, like, I, as a dancer, I'm a try hard. Try hard. Like, I'm a perfectionist. <laughs> yeah. So realistically, me going into it, um, I wanted to be the best in the room or like at least show that I'm giving the most effort just so I can have recognition mm -hmm. from like whoever's teaching. Um, so my sense is like, if, if I felt confident in what I was doing by the end of the day, then I felt like accomplished from what I did. And I feel like that's the best thing to take out of it. Mm -hmm. And to also just see everyone too. Yes. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Being able to see everyone and see everyone's like talents and stuff and like what they're good at. Because all dance camp is, is all you just train in different styles. So like you have like your hip hop day mm -hmm. before it used to be one week, one, but one. then they did it once a week later, like for a whole month. But, um, the whole, I'll, I'll just go by the whole week thing. So like one day it would be like jazz and then the next day contempt, next day modern. And then like last day hip hop or something. And obviously me going into contempt, I'm like, oh. Like, I don't do this, you know? Like, I don't do this stuff. But in a sense, I'm like, I already know the girls are probably going to be, like, laughing and stuff. But, like, I think with me showing that I was trying to, like, the teacher shows a lot. Because me as a teacher, if I see someone trying, that means I'm like, okay, they want to be here. You know what I mean? And I'm just like, that's really, like, a thing that um, clicks in my mind where I'm just like, okay, like, they want to improve and all that stuff. You know what I mean? So, um with me being there, it's like, I want to make sure that the teacher knows that I want to be here and I want to get better because um, I just like the recognition mm -hmm. from the teacher. So um, that's like the best thing that I took that I took from dance camp. Obviously, just from that aside, from being like with everyone else and just like having fun and stuff, because mm -hmm. realistically, dance is just supposed to be for fun. But um, dance camp is like to train and stuff. So mm -hmm. like there's both aspects in that. Um, but that's what I take from it. Yeah. Uh, my, I recall one memory and that was my first year on varsity. I had, I guess I had a lot to prove or something because people would always try to nitpick at me for being the tallest person in the room. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, I would, I mean, again, I, I was getting aggressive love from mentors, not literally from like an older brother. Yeah. Um, but this year's, I remember this team specifically, I, I loved only a few of them to be completely honest with you. I only did, it was like my junior year. And I, my captain would just try to like, just pick on me just yeah. because it was like, I was the new kid on there. I'll never forget going to the studio, Artistic Dance Academy, Dre Taylor from Effects was teaching and he did this activity called Last Man Standing. Yeah. That was the worst experience of my entire, I swear I lost 15 pounds dancing. That, that isn't fun. No, Dre, I was I was grinding. I'm a chubby high school kid going in, in on this activity. Pretty much what the activity entails is that you're performing nonstop. You only have four eight counts to rest and you have to go back for another four eight counts. And then you have four eight counts to rest and you have to go. In. If you're not performing full out, you're holding a plank until everybody's done. And it was the worst thing in the entire world. Now, I owe Dre so much for just yeah. even believing in me mm -hmm. and to even push us through that i really think he bullied us that day i do not care i think he bullied us for sure for good purpose because i walked out that day feeling tired mm -hmm. defeated but i woke up the next day ready to do more yeah because it was one of those things um it was one of those things that needed to happen and only at dance camp could you ever um that you could ever experience that yeah you brought up a good point seeing everybody yeah. at dance camp. Dance camp is also the first time you see the whole team. Yeah. It's also the first time. So if you have new members, incoming freshmen or anybody, that's the first time you see them. 
Uh, <laughs> and it's just a different environment too. It's such a different environment. It's like, just different. You walk in and it's like, okay, let's see who's gonna suck this year. And who's gonna kill it? So like, that's that's, that's, that's really, the best. And who's gonna be in the back? Yeah. Let's see if the captains hold up their end. Of that the, too. Yeah. That too. That's definitely a thing. Like you would go in and see if like your captains that year are like captain material yeah, yeah captain like, material because if they do not know how to hold up that's when you're kind of just like oh my we, god we were in a program that allowed if you were a senior you could be a captain i was like wait a minute hold on yeah that's not how it works i don't know about because that. if you are going to a marathon race and you have a senior citizen and you have a young prodigy of usain bolt's I'm going to choose the prodigy of Usain Bolt because that's who I believe is going to take it miles away. But then they started uh, bringing the junior captains. You were actually one of the first. I was, junior, I was a junior captain. Josh was one of the first junior captains for varsity. And so when that happened, I was like, thank the Lord there's change, man. Finally, because you got, there was two seniors and then Josh was a junior captain. And everybody listened to him. Yeah. They listen to, I mean, I love, yeah. I love the seniors. Well, yeah. Yeah. I love the one, of them. one of them. One of However, them. However, everybody loved Josh as a captain because chore- choreographically, smart. Team, team led, smart. Everything was smart, logical. Our senior captains. But I learned from him though. No, it's that's a, why. But, that, um, that's why. I, I learned from him as well. But it's because of the bad experience I had with the senior captain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the captains, I'm going to tell you something. The captains, the, I swear, would yell at us for a team bonding. He would be like, all right, guys, get over here. And I'm like, we're at in and out Why are you screaming right now? What is happening? Like, Weird. Yeah. Uh, like, we would just, it was different. But again, it's all about the program. It's about how you can build the program. Yeah. Some things needed to be changed. Yeah. Um, our sister is actually on the team as we speak right now. Our sister is a stop. Listen, as soon as he graduated, we thought we were done. We we're like, I don't okay, like, this. We're like, like answers. We're good. Thank goodness. I don't have to go to rivals anymore. Like, no, no, no uh-uh. we're good. I'm going back to that high school. But then my sister was like, oh, yeah, I made the dance team. And like, we're like, God, man, like, why? Why? Like, we, we have one brother that didn't dance at all. Yeah, so, so we're like, okay. Like, so there's four of us. So yeah, it goes me, Josh, and to our brother Joseph. And he has zero coordination, and we're totally okay with that. We're like, bless you. No, I don't know. He has hidden potential. I'm always the one to say no. he's the best one. He can be the best one if you try. He can be the best one if you try. You can cut that out of this. It's, it's, out never, of it's never too late. He could surprise no, you. What that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Don't be trying to gas him up. Gas is expensive. Don't be gas him up for nothing. No. Anyway, our sister, well, I love our sister. Our our sister is definitely showing fast improvement. And I could tell that like it's it's in the gene, you know. We we see her and me and Josh just look at each other. And she's actually on our team Padre Minor. So we get to watch her every week and see yeah. like how she improves. And then me and Josh look at each other every week and say, you know what? We were there at one point. Oh, let's yeah. let's believe it. Let's wait to see what happens. So, yeah. but every single week, the vein in my head grows a little bit. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, man, just, okay. just just change your last name for like a little bit. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Genesis, if you hear this, we love you. I swear. Yeah, yeah, we if love you. you. This, we love you. All right. We make fun of you just because. We, you know, we love you. We love you. And she knows this. Yeah, she, knows. she knows. That's what you do. That's what you do with the with the little sisters. Um, yeah. So that was high school. What happened after high school in terms of your dance journey? You can start that one. Um, so I had no idea what to do for my senior year at all. Um, our mom got breast cancer at the end of our high school journey. So I didn't go to college. I told myself I wasn't going to go to college. I was going to stay home and work. And I mean, that's something that you just, you just do. Like you gotta, you gotta make it work. I don't, don't let, don't let life stuff happen and change up your whole day. You just got to make it work. So, and she's great. She's good. She's in remission. Just let you guys know that. Um, But again, at the time I was so lost with everything that I had no idea what to do until I got a call. On the last day of school, this was the craziest 
thing ever. Yeah. It was a, our high school rally, my senior year. Um, I got a phone call from Aaron Babs at Myriad of Dance Project. And Myriad of Dance Project is a very notorious competition studio. Um, techn technical wise, like up to par, I don't know what kind of magic they do. I don't know. I still don't know to this day. Uh, she called me and I had taken a couple classes and stuff there um, at the end of my senior year. Um, and she called me and asked me if I wanted to teach and if I wanted to actually have a few competition teams as well. Um, I don't know. I don't know how she knew that I choreographed. I don't know how, like, or what. So she came to our dance production about a month prior and she watched. That was also the same dance production that I choreographed. Oh God. I choreographed over 70% of that show. Which, which production? It was, was it was the Toy Story production. Oh, okay. Yeah. Toy Story production. So it was like, uh, it was beginning teams, intermediate teams, advanced teams, all, all of the above. I had some kind of like choreography insight on it. So apparently she was there. Aaron was there. And, um, she said, she told me, and it still kind of resonates with me today. She said, you just, even though maybe somebody may not know how to dance, you have the ability to make them look like they know how to dance, mm -hmm. which is important. And I was like, well, that's good. Yeah. That's like, that's, that's great. Like that is something I learned about myself. I, I missed the call. It was a voice. I was in school. I was in school at the time. And I called right after our rally. And I told her, yes, I'll take it. I didn't care. I was like, whatever. Um, and of course, right after high school, you, when you get into like the competitions, it's like uh, commercial dance, high school dance, and studio dance. There's just so many different branches yeah. and so many different worlds that yeah. you have to adapt to. I had no idea what competitions were for studios. I have no idea what the only like, competitions we knew were like like san diego like yeah you know, like yeah those type of yeah things. like car like, yeah we knew like we knew the hype vibe we knew bridge we knew yeah. body rock we knew all those yeah. and then you get to here and it's like this is hall of fame dance competition like, and you can bring in your minis juniors teens and seniors and i was like and they all have five categories yeah, each. yeah, five categories, yeah. <laughs> you deserve a high gold diamond prize and here's like, your medal everyone, everyone like, gets a trophy yeah, i was like <laughs> i was like what what is this and i swear like one time um one time <laughs> there was a team there was a team my first year um my first year was horrible i had no idea what was going on i was literally like walking in blind I'll never forget our team got 10th overall or something like that, uh, uh, one of the technical teams. And they were like, oh, we'll get them next time. And I was like, 10th overall? That's amazing. I'm like, what are you? There's, there's over 5,000 kids at this competition, and you want to tell me we'll get them next time? I didn't even make, I don't think, the top 30. And you're talking about, you're talking about that, get them next time? So I learned, and I, I, I swear, six Six years later, I'm just now understanding everything. Yeah, it's the craziest thing. I, all I've known, all I've ever known, was to choreograph and to do all of this stuff, but to put it on like to kids and teach them and stuff like that, it's just been it's been a growing experience for sure. Um, and I don't know, I, I I still find myself learning every single day, but that's been the heartbeat of everything was Meriden Dance Projects because mm -hmm. they're. Erin, I swear, that's my, I call her my soul mom and she calls me her soul son. But like, I swear, she gave me, she gave me an opportunity that I, I don't think I would have even like, I, even if I prayed for it, it was like a long shot, like a blue moon kind of thing too. Mm -hmm. But the fact that it was the last day of senior year, I had no idea what was going to happen. Again, it was one of those things that you just, it just gets put in front of you and you have no reason to not believe it wasn't a blessing. Anymore. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. Um, other opportunities followed coaching. I coached for two high schools. I choreographed for the local high schools all the time. Um, and I did a, did that commercial. Yeah. That commercial, man. Oh, that motorcycle is so loud. Lord have mercy. So there was a commercial. I love to share this story because it's hilarious. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And uh, one of the moms that I actually, the, her daughter took my classes. She's like, do you want to choreograph a commercial? I was like, uh, 
yeah, I want to choreograph a commercial. I was like, what? What 22 year old doesn't want to choreograph a commercial? Mm -hmm. She was like, all right, here's the location. I'll see you there. I have no idea what this is. And I was going to choreograph on the spot. I I choreograph on the spot, nothing. It's third nature to it. It's whatever. Man, I pulled up. I see these like older people dancing. And I was like, then I saw firefighters. And I was like, then I saw hockey players and I was like, okay, what kind of flash mob is happening right now? This is so weird. And then I saw this lady and this young girl and then the audio started playing. And it was for a commercial for Johnsonville Sausage. And it was for the 4th of July, 4th of July Johnsonville Sausage commercial, which is I don't mean to brag, one of their highest viewed commercials <laughs> that got played during the Super Bowl weekend. And I I was there, I think, for 10 minutes. I gave them like two moves and they were like, okay, we're good. And I was like, are you serious? They're like, yeah. And I left. And that was my commercial experience. I saw <laughs> And what's so messed up, what's so messed up is the little, like, so I, I, I did two sections. I did one section where there's people walking and dancing. And then I also did another section where there's a little group of hip hoppers. Guys, the group of hip hoppers is this small on the screen. If you were to put it full screen, you can see them dancing. I'm like, ooh, kickball change. Ooh, that's it. That's all you saw. All you saw was feet moving. And I was like, nice. This was... This was such a flattering experience. However, it's a resume add-on. It was also a crazy experience. I had no, maybe I should ask what I'm getting myself into before I jump into it, just so I'm mentally prepared. Yeah. That was also like that was one of the biggest highlights of my life. So uh dance, dance has definitely taken me a ton of different places. Um, but as of right now, still at Married to Dance Project. It's gonna be my sixth year in June. Jeez. Um, I'm over at uh, the Dance Academy Del Mar. Um, I'm teaching there every Thursday. We are currently outside, which is the greatest thing in the entire world, um, especially right now since it's freezing. Um, but we'll be opening. We'll be opening within the next few months, uh, of course, when everything slows down. But opening the studio, not necessarily. We've been open. We've been open since August. Still moving, still grooving, all that kind of stuff. But that's really it. And then we have Project Matter. Yeah. And yeah. Go ahead, you can tell your story. I talk too much. Um, no, you don't. Um, so pretty much, I think with seeing Jake pursue dance after high school, it kind of like inspired me to do it. Um, but with him doing studio, I wanted to do more LA type jobs and stuff. And pretty much international travel uh, when it came to like teaching and everything. Um, So that was my motive. And I remember I was super cool with like the counselors like at um, at Chaparral and I I wasn't the best student in school, but I needed credits. Right. And then they're all like um, it was for like a certain class and they're just like, oh, like, so what, what do you plan on doing after high school, Josh? And I was like, oh, I want to be a dancer. They're like, really? And I was like, yeah, I want to be a dancer. And they're like, if you can, if you can tell us like how you're gonna be a dancer and how like that will like be viable for you in the future, then like we'll we'll give you these credits, right? And I was like, okay, like yeah. So I I literally uh, it was Mr. Compton was there. Mr. Compton, Mr. Com- our principal, he was there too, and um, the counselors and everything. And I told them like viably, like how I can make a living off of dance. And I've been using like the knowledge from what I've seen, like obviously from like social media and stuff. Cause I really haven't had like a mentor yet. I mean, besides Jake, but like I haven't had like a dance mentor yet at that time. So I was just like, oh, you can do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this to like be successful in it. They're like, oh, okay. So like they gave me, they gave me the credits and stuff. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a dancer now. So, um, so uh, after high school, um, I got a, I got a job at a Duna Mix Dance Project, um, and I was there for two years. Um, and realistically, like, te- I'm to the point where teaching 
for me is like super cool, but I want to be the dancer, not the person that teaches it in a sense. And I don't have a problem with teaching it. Like I could teach any day of the week if I wanted to, but I'm so much of a student. Like I said in the beginning, I'm a try hard. So like, I'm always trying to learn all the time. So um, I always have like that student in me. So like, I'll see like a hip hop class and I'm like, dang, I should be in that class. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, man, I should be doing it. Like what the, so, um, so, uh, but I've been teaching and stuff. Um, I work at Studio Kin right now. Um, but what I've done outside of, or after high school, um, I mean, I've done K-pop submissions, like Korean pop music submissions for people or like for some like uh, BTS and stuff. So, so cool. Those are, those are super fun. I act like, a, I, that's like my boy <laughs> band. Dream. Going crazy. No, that's like my boy <laughs> band dream right there. It's like, you, yeah. we all have numbers on and we're playing each like artist in the band. And then like, we just have to do like what they're doing and stuff. And, like they learn off the videos. So uh, we did that, and then, or I've done that, and then I performed at a bunch of World of Dances. I've done um, some in Dallas, mm -hmm. uh, one in Arizona. I've done a couple here. Um, I was going to do World of Dance, NBC. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, we, I, I was able to book a job for Quibi called Florida, and then I had him do it with me. Yeah, that's right. We had to dance on like a 25 foot stage in the air that spun and like tilted and stuff. Yeah. Oh, it was yeah. Like, that was, it was nuts. That was crazy. It was nuts. I was like, what is it? Oh, it's what? coming to Roku. You know that, right? It's for free on Roku. You guys can watch if you have Roku. Yeah. Get the Quibi app. I just read it the other Yo. day, but Quibi's coming to Roku, Roku body. So now all the shows are going on there. We're watch on, it. We're on episode five. So you watch, can watch it. it. It's, it's with like Liza Koshy and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's her show. But um, yeah, it was, that was intense. Um, I've worked for Disney before for, um, we, we oh, had yeah. to do uh, Raven. Christmas, yeah. Christmas special. Work with Raven Simone. That was fun. She's, she's goofy. <laughs> she's goofy. <laughs> like, it was <laughs> It was ridiculous. But, um, I mean, we re uh, I had to go to Milwaukee to recently teach um, for this group. Um, and, I, yeah, like I said, I work at Studio Kid now. I do, like, competition dances, same thing as Jake. Um, but, and I, I trained under um, this couple, Kevin and Dea, for, like, four and a half years. Oh, they know Kevin Dea, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they tra Kevin. Trained under them. And um, they were honestly like, like how Jake was saying that Aaron was like his soul mom. They were like my like soul parents, like at that point, because they saw the try hard in me. And like, I was there from day one till the day it ended. And um, they really took me under their wing. And then like, they, they were the ones that taught me like foundation and what to do when it came to dance because they're successful i mean i like we we all right. know that yeah. so like they're successful in it and they they would teach me like the business aspect what to do and like all that stuff and then with them telling me that it kind of gave me the idea of like oh okay well like that's how you actually do it it made me my my senior year version of myself talking oh, about counseling yeah. so i'm like that's not how you're supposed to do it <laughs> <laughs> so when they told me i was like okay that's how you do it you know, and then um, you just finesse those credits. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly did. I honestly did. But they liked me though, so it was cool. But um, yeah, so realistically, like I, I owe a lot to them because Kevin and Dale, like they, Jake even knows, like they took me everywhere with them. Everywhere. Like they, they spoiled the heck out of me with knowledge and like just pretty much love and mm -hmm. respect too. So, um, I definitely like have love for them, but um, they they've done a lot for me, and like at Studio Kin, Anthony's done a lot for me too. Um, he's he's definitely in the LA scene a lot more, you know. So he's the one that pretty much got me like that Disney job and all that stuff too. So um, yeah, so I'm in a real sense like for me, I'm more like industry based when it comes to like jobs and stuff, and. Um, Traveling and teaching, yeah. Teaching. But for right now, studio's cool. It's chilling. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. 
<laughs> Jacoby, I was dying earlier when you're talking about like the difference between like the competitions that we know versus studio competitions. It brought right. back so many memories. I remember when Michelle and I took our studio to Showstopper for the first time. <gasps> <laughs> we were like, oh shoot, we got a trophy. Okay, let's go celebrate. Yeah, oh my goodness. We are going to Showstoppers in three weeks in Vegas. Whoa, they're doing it. They're having, they're like hosting it. I'm going to say yes for right now until tomorrow. Yeah. We'll see what happens. But um, they're doing, so we're going to Showbiz March 5th weekend. And then we're also going to Showstoppers the weekend after. And they're both in Vegas. So we're doing back-to-back weekends in Vegas. It's, ugh, Showstop. I love Showstoppers because it's at Disneyland. I don't know how I feel, how it's going to be at the MGM. Because I... It's not the same. Like I love seeing Julian telling everybody good job all the time. It's the funny thing. Good, good job. job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Like, um, and he's so funny. I love that guy. I love Julian. But um, like showbiz and stuff, like I don't we did it one time beforehand. It was okay. Yeah, we're we're doing radix. Yeah. So you guys are like, doing radix, yeah. yeah. So it's such a different, it's such a different experience too. When I did competitions and stuff with uh SG, SGBM. Like, I was so used to, like, you go hard or you go home. It doesn't matter, like, yeah, really if you bad. pour it all on the stage. If you win, great job. If you don't win, at least walk out knowing that you completed something, you yeah. know? But, like, with these competitions, like, I love them because not only do the kids get the chance to perform and fight for that, too, um, but it's such a good vibe always. And there's not that stress factor that you have uh, rather than being on, like, a competitive hip-hop yeah. team, mm-hmm. you know? Um, cause I hate going to competitions with competitive hip hop teams and being like, all right, we got to do this. Make sure you guys get this part. We got to look clean. Gotta look and dope. don't talk to no one. Don't talk. Like, oh, like, like, you know, like for if what? Someone says hi to you. Look at them with a mean face. Yeah. Say, no. Like, I'm like, uh, okay. And I was the person, like, I truly believe that I was like a weird culture reset for SGBM because I was just, I was always loud. I don't care. I was loud. I was always talking to everybody. Um, Body Rock. Body Rock was a good example. I love going to Body Rock. Greatest thing ever. Went there. We we're backstage. The lab was back there. Mm. Man, I was in the middle of the lab circle, like hyping up and everything too. And all my teammates were like in the corner, like, "Where's Jacoby?" I'm like, "If y'all ain't in this circle, like, we need to hype this up. Yeah. It's a competition, but I don't really care. I'm here for a good time. I'm like, yeah. I done spent money on this competition fee. I, I don't know, have some fun. Around, yeah, like, I'm like, I want this dope outfit. I'm gonna dance in this dope outfit, regardless if I'm on stage yeah. or not. And then you go to like a showstoppers, and it's like everyone's standing around, they got their drinks and their plastic containers or whatever, and they're just like, Yeah, my kid's gonna be on stage right. She can't dude. wait to, to see them go out there and have a good time. I hope they kill it. Dance Mom Central. Dance Mom Central is that, and that's what it's a again, culture reset for both ends it's weird it's you it's a light switch you go into your area and you go into the area that you're more of an instructor and not necessarily like the one to be like like i would say i i I kind of incorporate both i like to have fun on both however again it's just different vibes on both for sure so i love how you said showstoppers it kind of gave me a little bit of an itch in my neck but that's totally okay totally okay I, just stress me out for competition I, a little I bit just, more. I, but. Just, I just remember like prepping for. Remember when we did studio and then like prepping for nationals and stuff. Oh, I I hurt myself our first competition oh, yeah. before our first competition. I wasn't able to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, dude, that was that was that was insane. I think what's what's awesome about though is like like we me and you we have seen that kind of world mm-hmm. and incorporating it into the studio world too gives the kids a different insight also because now they're like they go to a competition and they're like we're gonna kill it and if we don't win whatever and i'm yeah. like see that's, that's cool yeah. as long as you say you're gonna kill it yeah doesn't mean go up there and do a 25 percent job and say like well at least i kind of tried like no like that's gotta- like realistically dude it's it's like if if you go out there and give 110% mm-hmm. and, like, you don't get first place, 
that's from what they see, but you don't know if someone else is going to see it like on yeah. YouTube or something and right. they're going to think something totally different and they might hit us up and just be like, hey, yo, your kids are dope. Like, you, you guys want to do something mm-hmm. with that? Yeah. I'm like, blah, 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 this, this, and that. Yeah, but our um, studio's been, like, Married Against Project's been on Dance Moms and stuff too. So, like, whenever, like, they see our studio, they're like, oh, like, Dance Moms, like, oh, snap, like, this is the studio. But we have great kids to kind of back that up too. It's not like, if, you're, if your studio goes onto a TV show, and you only get that TV show to showcase your work, you and you don't have any like foundation. It's kind of pointless, you know. Yeah. If you if you have kids that bring that energy, that fun energy into a competition, and they haven't even hit the stage yet, then I feel like you've already won it. You just you you just showed up to pick up the trophy. That's all you really did. So yeah. it's totally fine. Um, I love one it. of the yeah, one of the things that uh, you know, Showstopper was so, sort of a, a new genre for us because, you know, when we had the studio, we were exposed to, you know, all the local competitions here. And so like Devin said, when we when we went to Showstopper, it was a different experience for us. But one of the things that I loved the most was that we actually, uh, and this is not anything negative against the competitions that that we've competed in, but when you when you're at competitions like, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, I can't remember world of dance or, you know, like one of those, you have a panel of judges that specialize in the hip hop world or, or a style in the hip hop world. When you go to showstopper, you're having pan like judges on the panel that are like tap ballet, contemporary hip hop. And so it gave us a broader, um, network of feedback um, yeah. that we yeah. could draw from. And that was one of the things that I loved. Like, uh, yes, everyone getting a, a trophy was like, I remember the first time we took our team, like everyone was like, we get to keep these? Like, <laughs> like, like, like this belongs to us, you know? No, like, because they didn't know. Yeah. Crystal, everyone, like, we won. We won. Yeah. Yeah. And we won the whole thing. Like, no one can mess with us. This, you know? Literally, this picture just showed up. Remember that picture I sent you, by any chance? Uh, I think so. I think you know. I'm going to find this photo because I just Dude. sent it to Josh, and it's a photo of us at Showstoppers. Oh, that one. That yeah. was... Uh, That's when I was hurt, yeah. That was... How long was that? Six years? I was, I was a junior in high school. So I was... I was That was oh, 20, 2015. Oh, 2015, 2016. There's a photo of... A, it's like popped up on my Facebook, and I was like, you know what? I it was way too funny like that's why I'm saying it's funny that you said that because I remember because the boys we were all like by world of dance like that whole Mm -hmm. like dance scene so we thought the same thing so when we got an award and we we were uh, a scene or a boys senior senior large group right and there wasn't like that category is so small so like when we got (laughs) when we got the trophy like yeah like let's go and we're just and i remember Aaron saying like guys it's like it only like, matters if you make overall yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we did it overall <laughs> so, so let me see if i can actually i have our first oh oh that looks it's so familiar it's bringing back so many memories yeah so we we did that one and it's a funny thing dion was on your guys' show as well too and dion happened to be at the same show stoppers at that same year and i remember seeing dion and this is before we even became teammates yeah. he said i showed him that photo he said wait a minute show stoppers 2016 and i looked at him and i was like wait a minute big white tees with the graffiti on it we screamed for five minutes because we were so shocked at each other we we're like that's crazy this is Insane. And so, but it, it shows you how small the dance world is. Yeah, Lost and Found competed. At this Lost time. and Found competed, right. Carla Durang's team. Lost. Oh, my Wait goodness. a minute. So we were there at the same time? Yeah, yeah. They, we, I, well, earlier when they were talking about it, I was like, oh, snap. We probably like walked past them, like while they were like rehearsing or something, you know, or like watched wow. them while they're performing. We're, we're, we're about to scream for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> we're about to scream. More than like so yeah because that was also the same year that i had teams also i was competing and teaching at the same time yes yes that's so crazy I was, I was you guys know that there was a time it was my senior year and this school had the 
this, this fool literally had to jump in the dance and he didn't know it. Oh, so one of the girls ended up uh, getting sick and she was, I mean, she was throwing up. Nobody's going to have to tell her to go on stage and go perform. My, he, he was the only boy on the team anyway. However, he had one mirror and it was like, uh, no, I was the only guy. I was center. But you were center the whole entire time. Oh, oh so we just split center. Yeah, we. I remember because oh. he told me, and I'll never forget it. He told me he's like, "I'm gonna watch you the whole time, okay? So don't mess up." And I was like, okay, so the whole time I see, I'm looking in my oh. peripheral, and he's just like, <laughs> "I'll never forget it. I will but, never but forget listen, it." But we listen, sold it though. I don't listen, know how we did it. We killed. We, we won that. We won that for yeah. Time. We got a trophy. Yeah, we got we the got trophy. trophy. Yeah. It was the scariest thing ever that we've ever done. And oh god, I we had that. to re-block in thirty minutes because yeah, we had to re-block go. in thirty minutes, and I had to learn choreography all at the same time. And so I did it because who else gonna be his mirror? Who else gonna replace that? And if we lost, if we actually, if she didn't perform, you guys wouldn't be able to compete because you guys were in these small. Uh, yeah. small group category and you need at least five and it would make four and yeah. i was like uh-oh this is not gonna be good so it was awkward formations um you had, you had to take james's shoes remember to i took one shoes. of my students shoes we had he had big feet and i took his shoes yep. we had pants yep. i had pants in my backpack uh and then i just took one of the tops from uh one of my other kiddos um and so we just jumped on stage i have to find that photo that you know, the, yeah, you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah, yeah. we're literally looking at the camera and our faces are Ooh. way too monotonous we're just standing there like like we don't want to do this right now like, this is ridiculous that, so. that was that was i remember aaron didn't even question it she was like you want to do it oh no it wasn't even like that she's like do you know the choreography yeah, yeah and i was yeah. like no she's like can you learn the choreography i was like uh she's like get right to it and i was like okay Oh God! And it just changed up the whole the whole day. And then I went oh, home. Man. I went home that day. I had messed up my kneecap. I didn't even stretch. Yeah. I was like, whatever. Um, messed up my that kneecap. Was crazy. I went home. My mom was like, "What's wrong?" And I was like, "I just got done performing." And she's like, "Performing what?" And I was like, "And then Josh walks in, and he, I swear, Josh walked in. And he was like, "Hey, mom, guess what we did today? Like, dude, we danced crazy. today." And I was like. God, we reunited on the stage again. <laughs> that was That's incredible, though. I bet you, like, the judges were just like, "Oh man, look at their vibe and like, look at this chemistry." They they keep looking at each other. They're having such a good time. <laughs> they look like brothers. Like they look, they like, look brothers. like brothers. Oh my god! Like, they, uh, so like, what do you expect? Like, oh, that was, that was so. Crazy. Oh, that was nuts. That stressed me out thinking about that. Wow. Yeah. Holy moly. I could talk to you guys for hours about Showstoppers because it was one of our favorite competitions. Before we move on, I just have one more thing that I want to talk to you guys about because I know all four of us will get a good laugh about it. One of our favorite things to do was to actually listen to the voice feedback that you got from the judges, like the judge comments. Because, you know, normally when you're like at World of Dance or whatever, you get the written remarks. My absolute favorite was hearing the judges when they were actually talking while you were dancing. So I have my <laughs> we got it, dude. Are you thinking of Franklin? Because that's what I'm thinking. Okay, so of. Franklin. So we had we went to a competition. Which one was that? Was that Bob? Bob Juniors? Uh, yeah, I think that was Bob Juniors. Yeah. It was it was Bridge Juniors or Bob Juniors. Yeah, one of the two. Franklin, you was one of our judges for Bridge Juniors. Oh, man, that was so uh, And he, what did he say? And we, oh, oh, that's, that shocked me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, so, that, was, that, was, that shocked me. He, I, Franklin, you has the, I mean, I swear, he was probably on the sleep app because he could, he could talk me to sleep. He has the yeah. most calm voice I've ever heard in my entire life. We were watching, and he said, uh, when the music changed or something, and he said, Oh, that shocked me. And I was like, I'm like, you sarcastic. I was, I was, I was so I was mad like, that you said that. I'm like, you know what? Said, oh, God. that shocked me. And I was like, oh, God. I was like, oh, my God, we suck. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, my God, okay. we're actually trash. And so, but I think 
again, I don't know the background. I don't know the context of it. Yeah. I all I remember was that was if, hearing Franklin you give us critiques was an honor. It was. I mean, I was so honored. I was like, this is crazy, Franklin. You like that's awesome. And then it's just the fact he said that. I, me and Josh looked right at each other and we were like, <laughs> we. I didn't know how to take it. I was like. But to, to go I, back to that showstoppers thing, though, I have my own opinion about that. I never listen to him anymore. I don't. I don't. I stopped. I can't. Because um, there was a time where something happened. The girls, the girls on the team, like, dropped into a plie or something. And then one of the judges said, nice isolation. And I was like, where? Uh Where's the ice? Hold on. I'm, I'm sorry. Let me rewind really quick. Said nice isolate. So that goes back to the judging thing, too, because, again, it could be a vocabulary that they only know and it's a perspective that they only see. But when I watched it, it wasn't my reaction. It was the kids reaction, which made me feel like the greatest teacher ever. They were like, what isolation? And I was like, somebody had to say it and it was not going to be. Me. So no, nice isolation. Nice, like nice dynamics. Like, nice dynamic. Dynamic. Like no, no. Like I just, I don't know. And they're so awkward. They're like, if we could just tighten up this area a little bit more here, nice, nice, and face up that line on the left side, and very good job. Nice isolation. Like, and everybody's like, what are you talking about? So like funny. what? It's 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 awkward. It's awkward. I, you remember that judge that really liked me though? Yes, though I, yes, I forgot absolutely. her name. Um, it was so it was a showstoppers competition. I forgot her. But name. she she's a she's a contemporary dancer. Yeah, but she came up to yeah. him afterwards and was like, "I need your contact info. I, I, yeah. I want to use you for jobs and stuff." She was nice. And over here, I mean, like me and Josh, we're like we're single 18, 19 year olds. We're like, okay, Josh, get yeah. the digits. Let's single, go. ready to mingle single, at a studio. At a studio, I was like. Hold on, this is a story. Jeez, story. Man. I like it. And um, but she was like, uh, she's done productions, she's done agency stuff, yeah, commercials, commercials. Yeah. She's great. But she was nice. She was like, so nice. I've I've had judges where I'm just like, bro, like what kills me is the dynamic thing. The like dynamic. that that kills me every time. Like, like, like when when you're doing moves, like, oh man. You're really hitting those dynamics, like, dude, like, why? Like, I'm like, what do you mean? You know? That's like, what I I, I, again, and I, I just I try to put myself in the perspective of like, what? It, so, what in a sense, like, what do they specialize in? What? Because isolation, you could isolate anything. I don't know if they saw something else, but if I got 20 kids doing the same move on stage and it's definitely not an isolation, I'm gonna call you out because that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. The only thing that isolated was my eyebrows when I heard the comment. I was like, hold on. What you mean? What? <laughs> do, you, do you remember? It's That's not, what it's, I was going to say. Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah, for, <laughs> I got to understand at all. Do you um, remember the Urban Street Jam when they wrote that note? But which one? Remember, I, I performed. You didn't perform at it. And they wrote the note with the, uh, you guys need a dance, like, person, like, homeboy in center or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I think I still have, like, the picture of it. Yeah. But I, for, I forgot what it was. That was the first Urban Street Gym, only Urban yeah. Street Gym that happened in San Diego. Oh, yeah. That was, that was the first. Uh, I mean, so, it's usually, so, Urban Street Gym happened in yeah, San Diego. Yeah, and yeah. somebody wrote on the paper, it says, you guys need to dance, like, homeboy in the center. And everybody was like, yeah. Does you. But it was so funny though. Was I funny. have to find the photo, but um yeah, it was it was like pretty pretty much it was your piece too. It, it was your dance. That dance was like the whole medley was just like awful. No one was it like no, everyone yeah. was like not with it. No, it was very weird. But um uh I just remember the person critiqued it and they wrote in the notes like I remember I was I was freaking going the full to freak out. But um the person wrote on the note saying, like, you guys need to go as full out as homeboy in center because he's just giving it his all and stuff. And I was like, okay. Yeah, I was, <laughs> like, it was, it was one right. of those things I was like, 
oh god i don't like this attention like uh, i would rather yeah you, i'd I rather, rather you just not say anything or yeah. not say anything but it was one of those things like if you guys would dance like homeboy in the center, then I would probably give you a good note right now. Yeah, that's why I was like, that's kind of like, I'm like I don't know. I was like, I don't know if that's a nice thing or if that's a that's a hurtful thing. I'm so confused. Like, oh, here it is. You find it? Tall dude in center is holding it down. You all have great energy. Bring it up to not or bring it up a notch to match homeboy. <laughs> I was like, like, like what? Like I don't, I don't know. I was gonna say, is it, who's the name on here? But Jasmine, interesting. Yeah, I don't know who it was. Well, let's let's find it. Let's find her. You have the message her. Be like, so yeah, I'm homeboy. Yeah, nice I'm homeboy. You remember me? You remember me? I'm homeboy in the center. Jeez, dude. Judges are oh, funny. oh my god. I could spend hours talking to you guys about competitions, but really, what I want to know is, you know, we've talked about Project Minor, and you know, we're we're living in the state of a pandemic right now, and so I'm really interested, and I know Deb is too um how has that affected training and rehearsals and prepping for competitions i know you guys said you're getting ready for a comp you know coming up but i mean how how has the pandemic actually impacted all of that it it affected everything uh to be honest like it there was a time where we were like we're not going to be able to do to do it this season like at all like we're gonna have to postpone but knowing us like the stuff that we can do and if as long as like you know the opportunity is there we'll make it work yeah. so with help from the studio that we read we read at academy of ballet arts so they clean their studio i swear i swear it smells like bleach in there like they clean it like every day and i don't i'd rather it smell like bleach than walk into a nasty studio and you don't know when the last time it's been cleaned yeah but they clean their studio they keep it up to par everything the whole the whole aspect of stopping dance because of this, like, of course, safety is number one. However, I care about the, we care about the kids' mental health so much that we want to provide that escape for them. And I don't really care what we got to do. So at one point we stopped and we did, it, we did Zoom rehearsals. <clears throat> we had, um, excuse me, we dropped our, <clears throat> our tuition by like half um we don't even charge that much tuition anyway we're like 50 bucks a month kind of people but we're like i was like oh, if you guys pay 25 a month we'll still provide you zoom training and it was even a point where we brought in choreographers to teach mm. on zoom we brought in danielle from bemo we brought in kai from choreotics uh goose mm. and we also brought in uh brian from uh uh, guess of honor yeah um and they taught zoom classes for the kids and it gave the kids something to look forward to and every single teacher especially danielle like danielle really held it down for them because she was like you know what she's like you guys are still doing it you guys are still pushing it keep that same energy up and this whole because this whole thing sucks um and we're gonna get through it and so there was a point of time where we started to slowly see the engagement tuned down a little bit because of zoom everybody hates zoom sorry guys i know we're on zoom right now but i hate zoom but, <laughs> like i teach on zoom yeah. we instruct on zoom i wear a ba backstreet boys microphone headset when i teach like zoom is literally giving me a headache <laughs> however it's been it's been the greatest piece of technology that we have so now when you start to see the kids start to lose that engagement can't make certain things we knew something had to give and we had to do something. So with the help from the studio that we rent from, um, and Dana, the owner is a, an angel sent, I swear. She was like, whatever you guys need, let us know. I was like, okay. So we have the whole station set up, temperature checks, hand sanitizer, kids can wear masks um, inside the studio. Now, if we do a full out run, Everybody needs to distance and they can take off their masks. That's how we do it. Um, but that's at their discretion. I'm like, you can choose to keep it on, but I'm not going to have you pass out on this floor for going full out to the point where you lost all the air in your lungs. Like, no. Um, our mission is to just keep the kids dancing because, again, that's the only time that we get to see them in their true potential, you know? I, I get it. 
we we have to be safe. We, we're doing what we can to be safe, and we leave it at discretion. So that's why we have the Zoom options still available. We set up a station for the kids to zoom in from home if they still feel uncomfortable. We've let this pandemic take away a huge creative part of us. And yeah. so we, something had, again, something had to give. So we've decided to continue our rehearsals in studio and on Zoom. We canceled our competition with Maxed Out that we were prepping for um, only because I, I want them to feel that experience in its full form. I do. I don't know when that's going to be but I don't want them to take an altered, yeah, an altered way because it's because of the way things are now. Of course, it's an opportunity for them to compete, perform, all that kind of stuff too. However, I feel like other things are a little bit more productive and can actually help the kids grow in dance, such as um, team bonding activities, choreographing activities, learning in studio, still getting that experience, that whole like, you're in the studio training for something kind of experience. Uh, video productions, we came out with two videos. We're actually working on some more right now for the kiddos. Um, and so we're looking at all these opportunities. We actually just uh, did a team bonding over here at Temecu Theaters. We rented out the whole movie theater for um, Project Matter and unofficial, our adult team. We rented it out. We watched... <laughs> We watched Dance Flick. It was like the worst movie ever. It's still hilarious. I like, I love it. I, I would never. I would never. I no, no, I would never play that to my kids ever I, again. Ever. I, I love it. I I had to pause it and I was like, wait, Josh, no, what are you playing for the kids? No. So anyway, no, it's fine. I it was it. such a good time. Um, and the theater, the manager at the theater was like. He's like, it doesn't matter if you guys have more people or whatever, just come in and have a good time. And the kids for sure came in, they brought their own snacks, like stuff was just super fun. But however, they finally felt, they finally felt like they were starting to know their team a little bit more. <clears throat> so um, thanks to the movie. Thanks to <laughs> You're welcome. I'm not playing that stupid movie ever again. <laughs> um, but the pandemic's, it's taken away a huge part of Project yeah. Minor. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're now we're using this time to get it back. Mm -hmm. uh, um, with everything happening too, kids are getting kids are still getting tested. They're still being safe. Uh, also, something to be mindful. I'm like it's not. If you are feeling any sort of uncomfortable or sick, then stay home. I like I'm telling you to stay home. I'm not asking you if you want to stay home. I'm saying stay home because what you're going to do is you're going to put yourself into a paranoid activity and then now you're not going to be able to give your 100% at a rehearsal where you should be. Um, it's just a sense of accountability. Well, without and, a doubt, right. It's, um, if it's like what you were saying uh -huh. with the mask thing. Like, yeah. If you feel like you should be wearing it, then wear it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if you if you don't, then be like smart so you don't mm -hmm. pass out. Yes. But then if you want, just put it right back on. Yeah. After. We, we have our kids walk in and walk out yeah. with masks on regardless. But as soon as you're in your space, like stay in your space. Do yeah. not be wandering everywhere and doing all that too. Because we got to respect the studio too. Our studio is being way too smart about it. Way too smart. And I was like, I give Data like the highest of fives when she said, we had one parent who got COVID, one parent who got COVID, who wasn't at the studio, was not anywhere near the studio. So she closed the whole studio for cleaning anywhere. Then she put everything to Zoom. And I was like, okay, fair. That's totally fair. We were still there. We still rented out. We still cleaned up all that stuff. <clears throat> and, you know, she's like, um, she's like, I would, uh, she always tells us, she's like, I appreciate you guys for just playing it safe. Like, there's always temperature readers in the front. She's like, we're just trying to be extra safe. And then that's when I, and that's actually when I told her, I was like, so which parent, like, I asked her, I was like, which parent was it? Just so that way I know, so that way I know where to, you know, push the kids. If the, if the kid, if she's like, the parent wasn't even here. We're just being safe for this, for the kid. That way the kid doesn't find like some kind of like embarrassment. And I'm like, well, that sucks. I was like, uh, embarrassed, man. I'm like, it's the time that we live in. I'm like, if it happens, it happens. You know, yeah. like you just have to be, you just have to be smart about it. But there should be no embarrassment. But she, she played it smart. She played it for the kids, and which is why I respect her to the highest. Because again, she's always looking out for the kids, just like we do, just like our purpose. Yeah. 
Well, I was going to say you've got you guys have shown a lot of um, resiliency through all of this, and a lot, and, and I think that all of us have learned to be flexible. But I think you were very creative in your methods, and um, you know, I, I don't know your kids personally, but I am sure they are extremely, extremely grateful for everything that you guys are doing. I hope so. Yeah, I mean, we, have, we have a headache. <laughs> I hope so. It's but a lot of effort. It's a, it's a time. Um, every single week, we uh, even when the lockdown happened for the state of California, like um, we dropped our rehearsals to an hour and a half each, um, ending at 9.30, so that way everybody has time to go home by 10 o'clock. We had to adapt so much. Even though we were renting out like hours at a time, like dropping our rehearsal time, especially when we still want to do things it's what you have to do to accommodate so Mm -hmm. um and like it was even hard for us too because dance was like the drive for us was still like kind of going down to you know what i mean so like that was a time for us to think like okay well these are our kids still so we have to like uplift them yeah. and i think mm-hmm. with us uplifting them and seeing them have fun when we did that yeah it kind of helped us like yeah get that drive still back you know um so it was kind of like a win-win for us yeah. in a sense throughout the whole thing yeah but we'll take our we'll take our wins right now too there's just it's just been too many losses and i don't care if i get one out of the five to be mm-hmm. to be a win it's still it's still small victories and you're just gonna take it yeah Yeah, like Michelle said, I'm sure your kids are super appreciative of all the work and dedication that you continue to pour into them and your craft. Um, From like just our discussion today, I can tell that you guys are both super like caring, hardworking and passionate teachers. I want to hear from you, though. How would you describe each other's directing styles? (laughs) I'm about to be talking smack. I'm playing though. Um, the way so Joshua even said it like beforehand. He's so industry like industry based. So the way that things, I mean, the way that I've seen his success stories happen is because I've seen his teams and his dances, and I'm like, oh wow, I don't know how to do that. However, it's through the way that he reaches the kids as a different kind of style. I'm so happy that we're not the same. I'm really, I really, in regards to dance, we're the same outside of dance, but in regards to the dance room, me and Josh always have different perspectives and that's beautiful. That's what, that's what makes this masterpiece. It's like a relationship. Yeah. (laughs) What's your Zodiac Yeah, what's your Zodiac (laughs) sign? So, um, so the way Joshua comes off is like, uh, every rehearsal, I mean, every rehearsal, try hard. That's it. That's Josh's mentality to try hard. My mentality is to always have fun, but still get work done. And that's always been the way that we do it. So there's days where we have too much fun and not a lot of work done. There's times where we try hard too much and there's not enough fun. It's a weird balance. However, we always find ourselves meeting in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because it's just that energy that we bring into the room. Um, Even when I was your captain, Mm -hmm. like, um, and you talked about how frustrated you were. Yeah. But it was also like one of those things that's like, again, just do this and you will see, you'll see success. Mm-hmm. You'll do this, you'll see success. But also don't forget the most important thing is to enjoy what you do. Yeah. And Joshua comes from an industry style, which is more militant. Yeah. In a sense. Like, in a sense, like I take my style from Kobe Bryant like yes. I, I I learned from his morality a lot where it's just like if you don't put in the work then you're just not going to see results mm-hmm. and um and yeah like th- there's fun in it all the time mm-hmm. but I'm the type I think I like to tell kids this you can have fun when you know what you're doing right, right like yeah. if you know what you're doing and you can do it full out like three times in a row then we can have fun bigger. you know what i mean like that's when you know you've earned your fun time mm-hmm. but if the dance is looking like doo-doo and you need some holy water on it then, <laughs> like we're not we're not having fun <laughs> you know what i mean so at that, that time sweet. at that point um what's it called that's how I work, where it's just like, if you guys at least don't know what you're doing, then you guys should know when to like take it serious, you know? 
Um, because I, then again, that's where I learned it from because Kevin and they were the same way. They love to have fun. But like when it came to like competition, like if we didn't have our stuff down and we're like huckling and chuckling in the back, they're just like, why are you doing that? You like say, you guys you, don't even know what you're doing. You say now. huckling and yeah. chuckling? Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, Jake, yeah, he's his way of running it. Like um, the kids, he he's what I like to describe him as is like a big teddy bear. So it's like a teddy bear is still a bear. So he could be mean when he wants to, but like realistically you want to like just, I was going to say, you, you instantly it's, like him when he's just like teaching and stuff. I was going to say, is that a fat joke? That's messed yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but when he directs and stuff, he's very like, um, communicative. Like he likes to like talk to the kids and make sure that they're cool. I'm more just like, if y'all don't have it, like, let me know really quick and then let's figure it out. And then we'll like, just try to get it as like fast as we can. But, but I think we have like a good balance. I think that's like perfect for, um, for teams and stuff, because if it's way too militant, sometimes it does kill the joy in it and, um, makes the kids see dance in a way that it's not supposed to be seen in, in a sense. Um, cause even like Jake was saying, he, he views mine as like the industry way I've met some industry people where it's just like stern and it's just not enjoyable to be with them. But um, I have been with like some community people from like San Diego and stuff where it's just all fun and like stuck with them. And I just love hanging around them all the time. You know what I mean? So I think that's where like the balance is from where, um, from where I stand. But Jake, I mean, you really haven't been to like LA though, like that much. You really do. Mm-hmm. Like, I only go to LA for Roscoe's chicken and waffles. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's the only time I ever go to LA anymore. <laughs> okay. oh. All right. So Deb, I was telling these guys, cause we were trying to figure out how to do the rapid fire and I actually want to hear from both of them. So we'll have you ask the yeah. question and then we'll go, let's go Josh first and then Jacoby. We'll do younger, older okay. brother. And we'll just toggle back and forth between each question. That sounds good. Yeah. And then we'll just, um, we'll double the timer. So we'll do like a minute. Normally we do. So guys, normally we do 45 seconds. Um, I cheat. I always go over because I always like to hear the answers. But I'll, 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 I'll set the timer for like a minute and 30. Okay. You guys get extra time. Cool. Are awesome. you ready? Yes. Yes. That, that was your first question. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, here we go. On your mark, get set, go. Choreo or freestyle? Choreo. Choreo. If you had four extra hours in a day, what would you do with them? Play video games. Video games. Oh, 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 video games. Okay. If you could travel anywhere in the world right now, where would you go? London, England. Student or teacher? Wait, what's the question? Student, 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 oh, student. student, for sure. Yeah, student, uh, yeah. teacher. I'll be teaching. Yeah. One word to describe your dance style. Hard. <laughs> uh, uh, fun. Fun. Favorite movie of all time. Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars no. for sure. Yeah. Would no. you rather live in the ocean or on the moon? On the, the moon. moon. I can't the swim. moon. Yes. The I moon. can't swim, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's your dream job? Streamer. <laughs> being a video game streamer for sure. Yeah. Uh, being a high school dance teacher. Favorite Five. TV show? The, the Mandalorian. Ooh, yeah, oh, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian. The Office, yeah, okay. Favorite food? Ramen. Uh, pizza. Favorite book? <laughs> Favorite book? You got five seconds. <laughs> Can a comic book count? <laughs> yes. Spider Man. <laughs> uh, the Bible. <laughs> Time. A... That's hilarious. I don't... The dictionary doesn't count as a book. I was gonna say that, but I don't. I don't even read that. Bro. <laughs> Yeah, does a comic book count? Oh, like, yeah, the word book. I, th- I think it counts. I think it counts. Um, I, 
I do want to ask you about your dreams to be a streamer though. Like what, what game would you want to like, I mean, would it be a variety of games or? A variety. Yeah. Because I mean, realistically all we play is just like Call of Duty right now. Um, but I, I love all types of games. I'm just the type to play. I like a lot of like single player games too, but, um, uh i i like variety i don't want to be like one of those people that like stays on like one type of game and mm-hmm. stuff so yeah i i feel like i would do like more like a good in a bunch yeah, yeah. Good in a bunch to provide for everyone Everybody. a bigger like yeah. crowd that would want to watch instead of like a certain amount of people that just want to watch one game but yeah you would do like animal crossing oh without oh, a doubt yeah. i love that I game. Like, oh i love that game without a doubt my dude be looking cute too. Oh yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. Okay, so I have to ask a follow up then. Uh, who are your current like villagers right now? Man, oh, dude, I'm. I had, I had, um, oh, I had the penguin dude. I I haven't played Animal Crossing in so long because I had the penguin guy, and then I had the um. Oh. My goodness. What was it, dude? It was the penguin guy. There was one weird looking dude. Oh my God. I can't even think. I can't remember. Um, it was a penguin and then it was a. Uh, you that's mine. I need to. Yeah. I forgot. What was it? Because we haven't played it since the when it came out. So it was the it was the penguin for sure. Uh-huh. Um I don't know why I just have the penguin in my head. I swear. Okay. The, I cannot think of it right now. I just remember when the dog came and he was playing a song for us because we beat the game. <laughs> I, I just remember that. I literally can't remember the other villages that we had, though. Oh, my goodness. Now you're going to make me go home and play. I'm going to play a picture right now. I'm going to strike that. Just because oh, just because Devin told you. <laughs> Look at that. That is so funny. Yeah, I need to, I need to see. Cause I, I for sure remember the penguin. Because I was like, why is there a penguin on my thing? But there was one that I just did not want on my on my island. What was it? He was ugly. That's why I didn't want him. Oh there. my god, Josh. No, I'm being for like he was made weird. Like he they didn't make him look cool. <laughs> I forgot. I can't think of it. But there was one um, round. Like, nah, he has not been Ni- on the Nintendo, line. you can't sponsor this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, everybody at Nintendo, at Nintendo, at Nintendo right yeah. now. That's oh. so funny. <laughs> I can't remember. That Jeez. was the funnest rapid fire I think we've ever had on this podcast. I'm not going to lie. When you, Josh, said that your dance style was hard, I was half expecting J- Jacoby to say his was soft. <laughs> I'm, I, because he would say that. He would say that. <laughs> I was like, I'm hard. Dead. Hard. <laughs> well, it is, man. Every time I teach it, guys, like it's always like, oh. Whenever I, whenever he says Josh is teaching today, everyone's like, oh. I know everybody's. I, know. I swear, scoliosis on the top just happened. Oh, my oh, my God. God. Nothing. Every God. time. Every, every single time. That was That's. Fun. That's funny. That's how we felt when Devin had to teach at the studio. Like every time Devin taught, sorry, I yes, it's true. Every time we were like, oh no, Devin's teaching. Because Devin always made us do floor work and everyone was like, what the heck? I'm a, literally, literally him. Literally him. You just sound like me. I don't I don't learn from him. I don't. Like I every time every time he teaches, I'll I'll learn choreography just to help the kids out and stuff like that too. When he teaches, I'm like, sorry, y'all. You on your own. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're good. Lord bless your ankles, your kneecaps, every single joint you're going to use today because I swear you're, you're going to need some kind of some kind of medical help after this one. It is ridiculous. Jeez, I, I want to um, yes. follow up on your answers to where you would travel right now. Why did mm-hmm. you pick your destinations and have you been there before? Um, I picked London, England. London's my middle name and I've always wanted to go just because uh, my, our grandfather used to uh, do tours and stuff with uh, with Motown, Motown records and stuff. So like he used to go out and perform with these different bands and groups. Um, he went to England one time to open up for Elton John 
out in uh, England. So uh, I feel like I have some kind of some kind of pull to just go and just see. I have no clue about London whatsoever, but I want to keep it that way. So that way, if I ever do go, I learn everything all in my one trip. That way I can come back here and I can like just talk about it and be like, yeah, I went to England one time. I went to London, England, and I completed. That's a that's a bucket list thing for me. So yeah. um, for me, I'm like a big anime fan. So like I love and just the aesthetic of Japan. Like yeah. it, it looks like a literal anime and I just want to walk in it and just <laughs> just you like feel I, cool. wanna, I wanna buy ramen out of like a vending machine with just a quarter you know what i mean yeah. like i i love that um and just like the the culture there is like super respectful and everything um from from my friends that have been there they tell me like it's just so much it's so much um there's more like it feels more structured there yeah. and not so like all over the place because i mean I, just california by itself yeah. is like all, all over, over the place, place you know what i mean but um like japan everything just seems like it just seems um every everything there is just like worth something yeah. you know what i mean yeah. and i just want to be able to like witness that and i'm a big guy for architecture and stuff too mm -hmm. so it's like, i want to see those buildings i want to be able to see like the old like buildings that are still up you know mm -hmm. what i mean like those are just like super cool to me but definitely want to see like like a downtown part where there's like arcades and all that stuff and i want to see like mario karts like oh, on like yeah. the street and stuff because i know they'd be doing that too but um, yeah, just because like I'm an anime fan, so I just want to go see. They all just opened up in the Nintendo World. Yes, they opened up Nintendo, Nintendo World. World. I want to go there so bad, yeah, dude. You should go. And then like they have like Attack on Titan, like yeah. amusement park and stuff. Like they just, it's just all cool. Like yeah, I maybe I'll go to the. Yeah, maybe I'll go with yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> the break. I. Yeah. I know that Devin probably is going to have a follow-up question about anime because I know that she watches Attack on Titans. We were... Oh, yes! <laughs> <laughs> we were having lunch the other day. We were having lunch the other day and her and my bro her and my other brother were talking about it. And I don't watch anime, but I do love... Um, I recently started watching like Terrace House, which is a reality show based oh, in Tokyo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I also watch another show called Midnight Diners, which is based in, nice. in Tokyo. Yeah, um, yeah. And I just love, like you, just like have a real like affinity and appreciation for Japanese culture. I think everything they do yeah. has yeah. value and respect and meaning. And so I'm, I'm right there with you. So I'll, yeah. Devin, I know yeah. you're like itching to talk about anime. <laughs> We cannot end this podcast. I, I promise we, we won't monopolize the time, the rest of the time talking about anime, but I have to ask, what is your favorite anime? Um, Dragon Ball with that, no. Um, because, because I grew up with it. It was on Toonami, on like Cartoon Network. So it's like, um, ooh, I, I could just say it's just because it's buff dudes fighting. <laughs> you know? But like, I don't, I don't know. It's just like, and it's the same thing, like Goku, it's like Kobe Bryant. So it, it, it is like a lot of things that I take from it. But um, like, I don't, so with an ice, I don't watch anime. I don't, but he does. I hear all about this stuff. So yeah. there was a point in time where Josh was on Dragon Ball and then it became Dragon Ball Super and then it became some Dragon Ball something else. And I'll never forget, Josh was like, dude, Goku just hit Super Saiyan. And I was like, sick. He's like, Oh my god, he just hit Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. And I was like, okay. Like, and he's like, he just hit Super Saiyan Ultra Instinct <laughs> Super Saiyan God three and a half. And he's multiplying it by two. He's about to go crazy. And he's like, oh, there's a guy named Broly in there. Yeah. And I'm like, like what do you mean? Yeah, like, dude. It's a it's a whole again, whole different concept. I don't know, but he tells me all about it. It makes yeah. me feel like I watch it. And I'm like, okay, it sounds good. I think it's probably like Dragon Ball for sure is like my favorite, but mm -hmm. then like that's like super cliche. But besides that, I think Attack on Titan probably is like a, a good favorite of mine too because it's not, it's not like, like I say, cliche like Naruto, like One Piece, and like all that stuff. Like that's all like cliche stuff. But like Attack on Titan, it's like that story is so hard. You know what I mean? Like it's very like 
in your face when it needs to be. Um, Demon Slayer 2, oh my God. Demon Slayers. Demon Slayers, fire, bro. You can't, you can't go wrong with that, man. Um, it's then, so good. And they're supposed so to good. come out with a movie. That was supposed to come out like last year, I thought, <laughs> or something like that. Dude, they, they keep putting, pushing it so back. hard. But, um, so <laughs> yeah, but I, I can't, I can't I, remember what Michelle said. What? <laughs> when you said it was so hard. Oh, it's so was, hard. It was so soft, man. <laughs> yeah, dude. But I, I will not watch One Piece, though. I, I won't watch that. That's mm-hmm. too many episodes for me. But yeah, those are my I favorite. can't I can't believe I can't. I know I said I wasn't going to monopolize the rest of the time, but I just have to say I can't. <laughs> I, I can't believe that they're wrapping up Attack on Titan in four seasons. That it blows me. my mind. That, that made me mad. I don't know if you read the manga or not, but like, I don't, I don't either this fourth season's gonna have like 30 episodes or something it better not have like 12 but um it because the manga literally went on for like so much longer you know i mean and i think it it recently ended not too long ago but like when i saw that it said final season i was like that makes no sense to me because you guys aren't even close to the end um unless you guys just stop because that's what happened with dragon ball super they ended it kind of and then like they're still going with the manga and stuff so that's why i'm like i don't understand unless you guys are gonna go back to it i don't get what they do over there like it's the same thing with demon slayer they're supposed to be doing all this stuff and they like keep pushing it back but like attack on titan i don't know why they're doing that it, I remember when i saw it i was like this is stupid like why are they why are they doing that in like one season like that's that's not reasonable but <laughs> this is stupid yeah I'm, I'm gonna write a letter or when i go to japan <laughs> i'm gonna go to them and be like what the heck dude <laughs> like, like what are you guys doing i came straight from california to tell you. yeah like i'm Why? speaking on behalf of americans right now like you're no <laughs> yeah. it does feel rushed it feels rushed um <laughs> oh yeah but like now my husband and i we were we we're trying to watch haikyuu um yeah. and we're like I really, I'm t- top five. I think that's my yeah. one of my top five. Um, but then we started like watching the newer episodes, and it was like kind of underwhelmed. Yeah. So now we're just watching Attack on Titan from the very beginning. <laughs> that way we can, uh, I guess, like run the clock so that the rest of the episodes can kind of yeah. catch up. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's better to do it that way right now because I hate waiting. I mean, I read the manga, so I already know what happens, but like seeing it right now it's just like oh okay yeah that happened that happened you know it's just like oh okay but it's still nuts man i it, that mess is crazy dude i love it my hero academia too that's one of my favorites my also i i love that one one of my students wore my hero academia shirt but it's all hello kitty but i knew what it was what wow. i was like is that my hero she's like how'd you know and i was like josh would be <laughs> so proud of me right now for even remembering this <laughs> so proud <laughs> that's too funny it's my gold star moment right there yeah gold star gold star, gold star for me yes so um i jacoby i'm like you i don't i don't like i don't interact with any sort of anime um not not that i don't like it but i mean my i was telling we had we had a <laughs> existence of anime whatsoever so it's totally okay <laughs> We had a guest on um, season three and he was talking about Naruto and um, I was telling him that my closest connection to anime was that I had bought a My Hero Academia shirt for my sister and that was like it. That was my closest yep. connection yep. that I could think of. <laughs> Jeez. And I bet when you were shopping for you, you were just like, is this it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, is this, you're like, is this, this it? This looks, <laughs> this looks correct, I think. Let's just get it, just because. It's fine. Keep that it is too funny. It like, looks so. Japanese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks Japanese, I think. Yeah. Japanese. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I am having so much fun talking to you, but we do have to wrap the episode. We definitely want to bring you guys back on, but one last question. 
Um, you know, we want to highlight everything that's going on in the dance community, uh, especially with everything that's been happening in the state of the pandemic. Uh, so I'd love to hear from each of you what your opinion is on what's good in the dance community right now. Um, I feel like, I mean, there's, I mean, there's a lot of things that are happening in the dance community that are good and not so good, of course, with everything happening. Um, I think, I think this pandemic needed, I think it needed to happen to really reconnect all artists. I feel like it did just so that way we feel like we have something to to fight for again you know it's been a while since uh since i've had this kind of like fire in my heart to like really dance again um so i think now the there's a the good thing about dance right now is the studios that are still making it happen and that are still trying to push through we get it once man once culture shot closed that was a huge dent in my heart because I was like, For you know me, what? It was movement lifestyle. Movement lifestyle, right? Movement lifestyle clothes. I so was like, those were what? those were dents that you know. Even even though I know for a fact they'll be back, I know for a fact they will. But it's the fact that it happened in the first place, and we couldn't. It was a stigma to not go to class, and it was a stigma to not go support your not to go support your studios and stay home and be safe we didn't put our our mental health we didn't put our creativity first we let something like like i get it it's a it's a dangerous time but however what would you do for your passion what 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 levels would you climb in order to do what you want to do um so i'm happy that there are studios out there that are still making it happen I'm a big advocate for again in person classes. Go take it. I it doesn't you need it. You you not having social not having social life, especially right now, it doesn't make any sense. So don't hurt yourself. Go out there and go dance with somebody. You know, um, I think what else is happening too is people are beginning to like wake up to everything happening, especially in the world too, and how it impacts dance. The whole, I mean, it's Black History Month and now people are just now realizing that we are embracing, we are embracing more of our Black artists this month than we ever have been. And that's a good thing, however, and I was just telling my fiance this too, I was like, you know what? I love how there's a month to really show the appreciation for Black artists, but if we can show appreciation for Black artists 24 seven, like, normally then yes like that's that's what's going to be more effective as time goes on that's the real change and definitely one of the changes was taking the term urban or urban yeah taking the term like i get it i didn't understand i didn't understand urban i did not know what urban meant like urban dance like i honestly thought it was like a san diego thing Mm -hmm. where it was just like a certain style but then when people actually put it well when i learned what the term urban meant Mm -hmm. that's when i was like like that it means that yeah, right and then yeah. i was like okay well then i guess that makes sense no, of then, course you know what i mean and then um it did put in a stigma because like it's hip-hop but then yes. like you have like urban where it's like black hip-hop and yeah. it's just like what you know i was like that makes no sense then you right know what I mean? we so we, it's a matter of just taking a step back and looking at everything that's happening around us too it's like what can we we're this pandemic is changing us but what can we do to change the community in a positive way so that way we can be prepared if anything like this were to happen again number one when we were in our homes and looking out at everything all the teachers all the classes and stuff we started noticing things we started noticing the appreciation and people started creating their opinions and putting it out in the dance world and that's what started shifting a lot of like a lot of different views from classes and people didn't want to start taking from this person. Um, the whole, the whole sexual allegation thing that started happening and everything too, like that was a, that was a waking moment in the community. And that's what, that's what inspired us to separate our teams by age. We have a junior team and we have an adult team now. Yeah. That, that needed to happen. That was a waking moment for us. Cause we were like, I'm, I'm not trying to take part in anything like this. So no, like we're out. Like no, 18 and up, you won't be here. If you're a 17, 17 and 364 days, you're right here. But when you're 365, you're right over here. Don't care. There, 
it's it's time for the dance community to just I think wake up and realize that you know change is happening around us and if we're not if we're not adapting to it and not speaking our minds then we are the reason why things will remain the same things will change and then we don't have any control over it but we we have so much power it, it takes two it takes two of us to make what we're doing out here happen yeah but imagine like what a whole community if we brought everything together if we understood things together what could what could the whole entire world do with dance you know so um i love it i love how there's there's a lot of good there's more good things in dance right now than there is bad however we were so wrapped up in the bad that we didn't focus on the good so um but for the longest time our brains were everywhere so yep we just didn't know so um, it's all right though happier now yeah yeah most definitely <laughs> i i kind of just consider it as like a little reset for mm-hmm. the dance community you know um yeah. For, I mean, for a minute, we just kind of, it was pretty much routine for everyone, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, people are dumb sometimes. People have, like, different uh, different perspectives on things. You know, people say some things to other people that just might not click. I mean, I can mention a certain someone that yeah. just went through something over here, you yeah. know what I mean? And um, at a certain studio and a lot of people realize like what you know and they were learning under this person so it's like it's a whole thing but people will not realize it obviously until someone says something Mm -hmm. and i think with like the whole um covid thing like people were actually really like having time to realize like what actually happened or what was happening and they're just like maybe i should say something you know, right. I mean, yeah. and um, with them saying something, it's making change. And um, some people are scared of it. Some people don't know how to react to it sometimes. But, you know, sometimes change does mm-hmm. need to happen. Um, and that was definitely a thing for the dance community. But, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think what we're falling so under is that there's a difference between expressing your views and... <laughs> expressing your views and then expressing your views as if they were facts and that's yeah that's mm-hmm. what's been happening that's been shifting everything and it's it sucks again stigma that people shouldn't be dancing in class no you're an adult go do whatever you're comfortable with if the opportunity is there go do it yeah your political views keep them to yourself because at the end of it don't matter i don't care what you go for we're all six feet under. If you prefer cremation, go for it. That's fine. Whatever. But again, we're all going somewhere. But again, it's not, we can't take that with us. Cause at the end of the day, your blood looks just like mine. It does not matter. Um, the whole stigma of, you know, black lives matter. Uh, black lives, of course, do matter too. Too. They matter too. Just like everybody else's life matters as well too. But the second that we begin to let that define us and how we view other people, it it, it eliminates the whole point of yeah. that movement. So we're we're people. We are people. People. We are. We were born and raised to love everybody and fight for everybody. I I do not care. And it's like if you hate me today, that's okay because I would still I still give the shirt off my back for you if you ever needed it. Mm-hmm. But when if people can learn to live in love rather than live in this bs society that's happening right now yeah then they'll start to see the change but we're so wrapped up in the what's in your social media bio what's what dance video did you post who's your political view oh without a doubt it's, man it, it's all it's it's crazy how much of the system dances yeah you know but how much it's become because it's not a hobby or it's not a profession anymore it's It's like more just like it's it's weird it's like your whole eHarmony account is in the dance room now because now everything that you're interested in everything all your views and stuff right here and I'm like I don't want to know that stuff can you show me some dance moves please thanks like that's what I paid for I didn't pay for a lecture about why you believe in this person so yeah I just I just can't I think we should just get back to dance yeah, Get like, back to like the, the old way, you know, um, where, <laughs> like, 
I always hear the stories about when YouTube had first started and you would just hear about that certain someone that dropped the video yeah. and you're just mm-hmm. like, they dropped a video to that song. Who's going to make a dance to that same song? Yeah, that's yeah, the better right, part, yeah. you know? And like, I, I wish it was like that right now, but right now it's just like, oh, I don't even want to say it's like mediocre, but it's just like, it's it's it feels so falsy sometimes yeah. mm-hmm. when like someone would post something and it's just like yeah. if they would give support under it like let's just say like if someone were to post something and it's not that great of a piece or it's not that great of like their piece you know but people are still like this is amazing fire 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 just to show that they know that person you know what i mean that's why they're saying it that, and it's just like uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like, but, if, but, if you, if you, if they know you, let's say that person that commented under is like your best friend and you post something that you are so passionate about and that you put so much time into, no one ain't going to comment no, on it. No, no. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you can't put a price on like support. It's yeah. insane. It's like, I get, I get supporting for, I get support, but I think we have to support for the right reason. And so all of a sudden it's not, it's not cool to support your friends anymore or something. Like yeah, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it, again, it's that stigma. The stigma yeah. created to do that. So. I, feel, I feel like that's the biggest thing for me that needs yeah. to change is just definitely like the support aspect on um, just everyone's, everyone's hustle. You know what I mean? Yeah. And if, if a person, if you know a person's not really putting forth that hustle, but they're still getting that clout, like really just take your time to see who is putting forth that like hustle, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? And show them the recognition that they deserve. They deserve because mm-hmm. like, I mean, that person that's putting out like that, uh, like not effort type stuff. Yeah, not to train. They're already not, getting yeah. that clout. They're so it's just that, like, yeah. you know, you could be putting that effort into someone that's yeah. like, putting forth that effort. And I think it also goes with what like David Slaney just posted. David Slaney just posted something on his Instagram um, about taking a chance on other people. Stop worrying yeah. about like where the support is going, but look around you because there's so, especially now, everybody can be a dancer if they wanted to, but it's a matter of who wants to put in that 150% exactly. every single day. Yeah, without But you, you're not going to know that person unless you start taking a chance on them too. Yeah. God, I love David. David's great. Yeah, David's cool. David's so cool, man. Just because I said that. But yeah, that's really it, right? Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I, I This has been probably the best hour I've spent in my day today is talking with you guys. This has been, I've never laughed so much. Um, <laughs> don't, don't, <laughs> don't tell any of our other guests that. No, I'm just kidding. Hey! Um, <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but seriously, it has been a privilege and a pleasure. And I just, on behalf of the entire dance community, thank you both for everything that you continue to do and you continue to, to, to work for, um, to bring the community together. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being on this podcast. We would love, love, love to have you guys back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you just, I want to be back. I want to be back. I love talking to y'all. It's hilarious. But we appreciate you both um, and everything that you're doing for the community. Seriously, yeah. I love I love when I get that post that said, it's that time again. Yeah. Another episode, and I'm like, oh, here we go. That's right. This was my first podcast. I've never done this before in my entire life. So nice. this is so, this is so, when I told him, I was like, hey, you know that podcast that we're talking about? He's like, oh, yeah, the Collab podcast. I was like, yeah. They just look at the Project Matter account and then they're like, <gasps> yeah. I was like, everybody hold your chairs. This is going to be a fun time. So, yes. Uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts. And like you guys have been on our radar for, I think, a while now, like when you guys first like, re- like, I think you messaged us on um, that Instagram account. And I was like, we got to add them to our list. We got to bring them on. Like, oh, and the fact yeah. that you guys, like, yeah. That was, that's when the pandemic like just hit too. And I was, yeah. and I was like, I was messaging people just because I was like, you just be safe. Like, yeah. I don't know what's happening right now, but if you guys are being safe, then it makes me feel a lot better about myself. <laughs> so yeah, no. Again, just we love you guys. We appreciate you guys. You guys are like family already, so it's really cool. So 
Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. You're gonna have an anime talk next time we're on here for sure. Oh, That's no question. Yes. Me and Michelle are gonna go to the side and just talk yeah. talk crap on y'all. So it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. We're gonna have our own separate episode. We're gonna talk about showstoppers, and then you guys can talk about yeah. anime. There you go. There you go. That's cool. <laughs> I'm like on a second note, I'm gonna pass on that one. Just yeah. for listen, showstoppers, because I'm like. Mm. No. no, I have a better idea. Jacoby and I are going to give vocal critiques on you guys talking oh. about anime. <laughs> nice lip movement. That, nice, nice, lip nice, movement. nice isolation of the eyes. Nice isolation. Of oh, nice. nice. Nice hard anime. Yeah, yeah. Nice hard anime. Yes. I love it. Thank um, you guys. Please don't bring your friends. Thank you so much for listening to the Collab Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please show your support by leaving a review on iTunes. And be sure to subscribe to our show wherever you get your podcasts. The conversation continues over on Instagram and YouTube with highlights from today's episode.